Hello, everyone. My name is Tanya, and this is North of the Fray. And I thank you so much for pressing play and joining me for this video. I'm going to talk about forgiveness today. And I'm going to talk about why you need to just release the thoughts of needing to forgive people who are unrepentant, people who have not confessed the wrong that they've done, people who don't care about your forgiveness, people who have no remorse for anything they've done to you. I want to show you how it's okay to just let go. But before I get into it, I'd like to ask you guys to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the content with anyone else you know who is struggling with whether or not to forgive someone who is not sorry. So I want to share a little bit about myself really quick and how I came to this understanding. I struggled, you guys. I wrestled with the thought and the feelings of how and why I needed to forgive someone who wasn't sorry. Not only that, the person doesn't even acknowledge anything that they've done. They continue to lie and tell stories that are not true, create a, an entirely different narrative than what really happened. And I, from all of the Christian folks around me, I'm told, you need to forgive. You just need to forgive that person. That's how you're going to find peace. But y'all, I wasn't finding any peace in that. I was starting to feel angry. I was starting to feel bitter. And I didn't want to think about that person. I didn't want that person to have space in my life. But because people were telling me I needed to forgive, I was trying to do that. And it was making me angry until I talked to God and I said, God, I don't want to forgive this person. I just really don't even want to think about them. However, Lord, if this person were to come to me or these people in some of your cases and say, I'm sorry for what I've done and they take accountability, they acknowledge their wrongdoing. Of course, I'm ready, Lord, and willing to forgive them because I will know that um, they have actually done some of the work they need to do to come and acknowledge a person who's been smearing and lying and, and doing heinous things to other people and myself included to come and do that. I'll know in that moment that person is changed and I'll forgive. I'm willing and ready to do that. But this person continues to do horrible things to people. I'm not going to forgive them. I don't want to worry about it. And God said to me, just, just as plain as day, I don't remember asking you to do that. Just let go. And I was like, let go? Yeah, let go. You're hanging on to it pretty tightly. Just let it go. I said, let go. Okay, I think I can do that. I can let it go piece by piece. But you sure I don't need to forgive? Like try to figure out how to do it? No. Why? Did that person acknowledge what they've done? No, they didn't. Okay. And here's where God led me. First, I want to say this. Forgiveness with Christian teachings is profoundly tied to repentance and transformation. We know that, right? Unfortunately, some people feel like it's tied to their salvation. And I'll talk about that scripture here in a moment. But God showed me in 1 John, I had to read it over and over and it just clicked. 1 John 1, 9, it emphasizes the conditionality of God's forgiveness. In order for God to forgive us, we must confess and acknowledge our wrongdoings. Forgiveness is available. But if I don't acknowledge what I've done and confess it, then I don't get to access it. I don't get to go to heaven. Because 
I haven't acknowledged that I've done anything wrong. I feel that I'm right and I just continue in my lies and carry on. However, it's available for me to access if I want to, but I must meet the conditions. This concept extends into how we approach forgiveness to others, or at least how we should approach forgiveness with others. Yes, while Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 through 15, which is always used out of context, underscores the necessity of forgiving others to receive forgiveness, the broader scriptural narrative includes the importance of repentance. Going back to 1 John 1, 9, you must confess, you must acknowledge, okay? So Matthew is telling us, yes, you've got to forgive others to receive forgiveness, but that's talking about people who are coming to confess to you to say that, hey, I acknowledge my wrongdoing. Will you please forgive me? Absolutely, I will. Okay. True forgiveness from God is a model of how we should approach the act ourselves and how we should expect others to approach it. We all should acknowledge the harm. Seeking forgiveness and commit to change. Okay, so acknowledge the harm, seek forgiveness and commit to change. We have to do that in order to access true forgiveness. So why would God have that condition, an infinite God, and put a huge burden on a finite human being to say, I don't care what they've done to you. You still need to forgive them. I know that I have conditions for forgiveness, but you No, you can't have any conditions. I don't care if people rape you. I don't care if they murder people that you love. I don't care what they do to you. You just need to forgive them. Uh, No. No. God is not expecting that from you. When dealing with someone who has wronged us without showing any remorse, the challenge becomes not so much about extending forgiveness to them in the absence of their repentance, but about resolving within ourselves to let go of the hurt and bitterness. This process is less about the other person's actions or lack thereof and more about our own spiritual and emotional health. In instances where the offender remains unrepentant, our focus shifts from acting actively forgiving them, right, to releasing the situation into God's hands. This isn't about dismissing the wrong or pretending it never happened or anything like that. Rather, it's acknowledging that we cannot force remorse or change in the other person. Instead, we can make a conscious decision not to let their actions continue to control our emotions or our peace of mind. It is essential to recognize the role of God's justice in this context. God sees all, God knows all, including the wrongs done to us and the state of the offender's heart he also knows. So by choosing to let go and trust God to deal with the individual According to his wisdom and his justice, we free ourselves from the burden of anger and resentment. And I also want to say from the weight of feeling like we need to find forgiveness somewhere within ourselves to give to them. We just need to let it go, free ourselves and let God have it. This act of release doesn't negate the need for the wrongdoer's repentance but it acknowledges that their change of heart is between them and God. I hope my little tidbit has been helpful. Okay. I don't want you to carry that burden. That is God's business to deal with people who are unrepentant. It's not your business. 
They've done wrong things to you. God saw it. God will handle it. He will deal with it. You just need to let it go. Let go so that God can do the work he needs to do on you for you and your path, not theirs. He'll deal with them. Please let me know in the comments below how you feel about this. I know it's highly controversial, but this is what has helped me find a place of peace in God. And I'm very confident in my understanding. And I hope that some of you are able to release that need where you're grappling back and forth of whether or not I need to forgive. And it's starting to make you feel angry towards God. And it's starting to make you feel angry towards other people. And you're acting out and feeling overwhelmed and hurt and betrayed all over again. Every time you think about it and you need to forgive them, you feel re-victimized over and over and over again. Okay? Release it to God. And open yourself up to healing and peace, regardless of the other person's actions. Okay? They have to decide what they're going to do. That's no longer your business. Take good care of yourself. Remember to put God first in everything. And love on the people who love you and love them well. Goodbye.